to now we've covered straight line graphs and parabolas and today we're going to learn all about hyperbolas. So we're going to start with the function fx equals 1 over x, which I hope you now know we can also write as y equals 1 over x. So I want to draw it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get my little graph paper ready to go. And the easiest way to draw a graph when you're unsure about the shape is to use a table. Now I know those numbers look strange and seem like a strange choice, but bear with me and you'll see why. So first we're going to substitute negative 4 into our f of x, and we're going to get negative 1 over 4 pop that in our table. Similarly, we'll find f of negative 3 and we'll get negative 1 over 3 and pop that in our table. Then we'll do the same for negative 2, negative 1. Now I just want you to notice how this works with a fraction. So f of negative 1 over 2 would give us 1 over negative 1 over 2. And I'm hoping that you remember from previous years that we tip and times when we divide by a fraction. So we're going to get negative 2. You'll notice that this is just the inverse. It's basically like we flipped our fraction around. Similarly, negative 1 over 3 will give us a y value of negative 3, and negative a quarter will give us a y value of negative 4. So let's plot these points on our graph. Let's start with where x is equal to negative 4 and y is equal to negative a quarter, then x is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative a half, negative a third, and negative a quarter. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Seems like we're getting a shape out of that. But let's see what happens if we use some positive values and zero, since in the previous one we were only looking at negative values. Let's start with zero, and we're going to find f of zero, which is going to give us one over zero. And I really hope that some alarm bells are ringing here. One divided by zero is not zero. It is undefined, meaning that that value doesn't exist. Now this is a really interesting case. We've never had something like this before. So let's see how this plays out. Okay, now let's try f of a quarter. And again, we're going to remember to tip in times. So this will give us a value of four. Similarly, half will give us a value of two. And then one will give us a value of one. Two will give us a y value of a half. And then three will give us a third and four will give us a quarter. So let's plot those. Now remember, when x is equal to zero, there is no point on the graph. So we can't plot that. Let's start with x is equal to a quarter, y is equal to four. Then x is equal to a half, x is equal to one, two, three, and four. Now all we do is we connect the dots with a nice smooth line. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Let's point out some general characteristics about the hyperbola. There are two separate parts to this graph. You'll notice that they're not connected. When we drew the straight line, it was one straight line. When we had the parabola, it was one either happy or sad face. But now we're dealing with two separate parts. I like to remember it as the hyperbola has a high number of portions. So there's two separate parts. What else can we see? Well, we can see that there's no x-intercept, nor is there a y-intercept. At no point does this graph cut the x or the y-axis. In fact, if I carried on these axes and they went to 2 million or they went to infinity, they would never cross the x or the y-axis. Another interesting thing is that it has two asymptotes. Now you'll notice I underline that word asymptotes. That's a pretty important word. And it's going to come up quite often for the rest of your functions. So let's figure out what it means. Thank you, Internet. An asymptote is a straight line hmm, that continually approaches a given curve but does not meet it at any finite distance. So what does that mean in English? An asymptote is just a straight line that it looks like the graph is going to get really, really, really close to touching, but it never actually will touch it or cross it. Let's have a look at the graph here. We can see that x equals 0, and you can see that line popping up on the graph now, is an asymptote. This line is also called the y-axis. This is an asymptote because the graph will never cross the y-axis. So that is our vertical up and down asymptote. Is there another one? Well, I did say there were two, so let's have a look. What about y equals zero? 
That is our x-axis. You'll notice that it doesn't cross the x-axis either, but it does look like it's starting to get very, very close. Now, these two asymptotes are what make hyperbolas unique. Again, hyperbola has the highest number of asymptotes that you're going to deal with in grade 10. Now that we've seen the basic graph of fx equals 1 over x, let's just write down some basic observations. Well, no x-intercept. There's also no y-intercept, and we've seen that the asymptotes are x equals 0, the y-axis, and y equals 0, or the x-axis. Now that we've seen the basic fx equals 1 over x, let's talk about the standard form of the hyperbola. The standard form of a hyperbola is y equals a over x plus q, and I'm really hoping that that a and that q are bringing up some parabola vibes. Okay, so just like before, let's see the impact that that A will have on a graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a graph where we change the A value. So let's plot 2 over X. Hmm. So there we can see that it shifted the graph a bit further away from the axes. That's pretty interesting. Let's talk about the characteristics now of this graph. Still no X-intercept, still no Y-intercept. And the asymptotes are still the same. It's still x equals 0 and y equals 0. They're still not crossing any of the axes. All right, so what if I tried a half over x? Huh, well, now we can see that that's getting closer to the axes. But again, it still doesn't cross them. So still no x-intercept, no y-intercept, and the asymptotes are still x equals 0 and y equals 0. So we can see that the bigger the A value, the further away it pushes the graph from the axes. And the smaller the A value, the closer the graph gets to the axes. But remember, they still don't cross either of the axes. So just like before, the A value still tells us about the shape of the graph. So that's great. Now we know what happens if A changes values as long as it's positive. But what happens if a is negative? Let's plot negative 1 over x. Now watch carefully. Huh, that's pretty cool. Now, instead of being in the top right and bottom left, it is now in the top left and bottom right. Those four little sections are called our quadrants. Initially, f of x was in the top right and bottom left quadrant, or 1 and 3. And now, j of x is in the top left and bottom right quadrant or 2 and 4. So let's see the characteristics of j of x. Let's see if anything is different. So there's no x-intercept, still no y-intercept, and you'll see that the asymptotes are still the same. It's still not crossing the x or y axes. But what we can see is that we can generalize. When a is greater than 0, our graph will always be in the top right and bottom left quadrants. And when a is less than 0, our graph will always be in the top left and bottom right quadrants. Now, how on earth are you meant to remember this? Well, if you look pretty carefully in this first quadrant over here, you'll see that your y values are positive, And over here, your x values are positive as well. A positive times a positive gives us a positive. And down here, we can see that our x values are negative and our y values are negative. A negative times a negative gives us a positive. So when A is positive, it'll be in those quadrants. Then if I look at this top left quadrant, my Y values are positive, but my X values are negative. Positive times a negative is a negative. So when A is negative, it'll be in there. And similarly down here, Y is negative and X is positive. And a negative times a positive will give me a negative. So I hope that that helps you to remember which quadrants they're in. Now we know that A has an impact on the shape, just like in the parabola, but what about this Q value? The only way to figure it out is to try and plot some graphs with different Q values. So let's start with a graph where Q is equal to plus 2. Hmm. So here we see Kx is equal to 1 over x plus 2. It looks like the graph shifted up to but there's also some other interesting things we can see here. Do you notice that now we have an x-intercept of negative a half zero? Because we've shifted it up, it now crosses the x-axis. There's still no y-intercept. And now let's see what's happened with the asymptotes. x is still equal to zero. This graph still doesn't cross the y-axis. But now we see that the other asymptote is y equals 2. 
When Q was equal to 2, our horizontal asymptote now became Y is equal to 2. That's pretty interesting. Let's see what else we can find out. What if Q is equal to negative 2? So here in MX, we've got 1 over X minus 2. Here we can see that there is an x-intercept, but this time it's a half zero because it's been shifted downwards. Still no y-intercept, it's still not crossing the y-axis, and one of the asymptotes is still x equals zero, but the other has now become y equals negative two. Just like before, Q will tell us the vertical shift, but in a unique situation for the hyperbola, it is also telling us the horizontal asymptote. So, when Q is greater than zero, the graph shifted up, and when Q is less than zero, the graph is shifted down, just like it was for the parabola. That's pretty cool. Now let's talk about something that's unique to the hyperbola. We're going to look at the basic graph fx equals 1 over x again. Now, this has two axes of symmetry. If you remember, our parabola had one axis of symmetry, and if you're sitting there going, what on earth is an axis of symmetry? Let's turn to the internet. It's a line through a shape so that each side is a mirror image. When the shape is folded in half along the axis of symmetry, then the two halves match up. So if we look at this graph over here, we can see that there's an axis of symmetry right here. If I folded this graph over that line, I would have a pretty good mirror image. But if you look really carefully, you can see that this is also an axis of symmetry. If you folded it across this line, you would see that it is also a mirror image. So just like a hyperbola has two parts to it, it also has two axes of symmetry. Let's look at the standard equation for our hyperbola. Because these two axes of symmetry are straight lines, and we know pretty well how to find the equation of a straight line, we could find the equations of these two straight lines. Our first straight line will be y equals x plus q. So you'll see that that is one where m is 1, and our y-intercept is q. So that is our upward sloping axis. Then our second one will be negative x plus q. And we know that this is our downward sloping axis of symmetry because our gradient is negative 1. Then something else that happens is that these lines intersect at the point 0, q. Now what does intersect mean? That's the point where they cross. And if you look at the graph, you'll see right in the center there, that is the point of intersection. Now, in fx, there is no q value. q is equal to 0, so the point of intersection is 0, 0. But in any other graph, it would be the point 0, q. Now, all that's left is to figure out how to sketch the graph of the hyperbola. Because I'm sketching, I'm going to pop down some graph paper. And then, very importantly, I'm going to identify my a and my q value in the graph. Because we know that these give us really important bits of information. The very first thing you want to do when you're drawing a hyperbola is to find your asymptotes. One of your asymptotes in grade 10 will always be x equals 0, or the y-axis. The other will always be y equals q, and in this case, q is 3. Once you find your asymptotes, you should draw them on your graph. Obviously, x equals 0 is the y-axis, so you don't have to draw it, but do draw your y equals 3. The best thing to do is to draw it with a dashed or dotted line. And because we want to foster good habits, we're going to label that graph. Then the second thing we're going to do is look at the shape of the graph. Now we can look at our a value, which we see is minus 9, and we can decide if that's positive or negative. Well, negative 9 is definitely negative, so that's less than 0, which means that it should fall into these two quadrants, top left and bottom right. So we'll just keep that in the back of our minds so that when we draw our graph, we're sure we're drawing them in the correct place. And our step number three is finding our x-intercept. And in order to do that, we always set y equal to zero. So we've got zero is equal to negative nine over x plus three. And because I want to get the negative nine over x by itself, I'm going to move this three over and it becomes negative three equals negative nine over x. Now the unknown, the thing that I want is the x and that's at the bottom of a fraction. When my unknown is at the bottom of a fraction, I have to multiply both sides by it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x and I'm going to get negative three x equals negative nine. Dividing both sides by negative three gives me x equals three meaning that my x-intercept sits at the point 3, 
zero. Now that I have that point, I can plot it on my graph. And that's it. All that's left is actually drawing the graph. Now, if it would make you feel more comfortable, you're welcome to plug in a couple of values of x to find the corresponding y values, but it's really not necessary. As your marker, all we're looking at is, do you know what your asymptotes are? Have you found the correct x-intercept? And are you putting these things in the correct quadrants? Now, have a look here. We said that the quadrant should be top left, bottom right. And when we draw it, there it is. Okay, guys. That's all there is to hyperbolas at the moment. In our next lesson, we'll work out how to find their equations. But for now, let's just get comfortable with drawing them. Good luck.